I'm Kramer, and welcome to my world. You need to get in the game. Farms are going to go out of business, and he's nuts. They're nuts. They know nothing. I always like to say there's a bull market somewhere. And I promise Mad you money. Just you can't afford to miss it. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. America. Other people want to make friends. I'm not that interested in that. I'm trying to help you make money. My job, not just to entertain, but to educate, coach, let you figure it all out. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC. The Germans are coming. The Germans are coming. Ooh, the Germans. Uh-oh, the Germans Stop are coming to get Stop me. Stop using us. Oh, don't let the Germans come after Please me. Stop the pretending oh, you're the scared Germans game. Are coming Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, so are the Chinese, the Brits, the Swiss, the French, the Norwegians, the Indians, the Canadians, the Spaniards, the Brazilians, and even the Dutch, for heaven's sake. How can you not think about that, even when the Dow managed to eke out a remarkable eighth day of gains? Closing up seven points. Uh, S&P and NASDAQ just couldn't keep pace, falling 0.28% and 0.29%, respectively. How can you ignore it when it looks like the New York Stock Exchange, perhaps the single most iconic capitalist American institution is about to get bought by the Germans, with Deutsche Bohr soon to own 60% of the combined company. Now, I have worked across the street from the New York Stock Exchange for 28 years. And frankly, I am flabbergasted at this. The Germans buying the company that I have always felt most represented what we are all about, the American capitalist spirit. Will we be seeing the German flag supplanting that giant old glory that's unfurled almost daily on the most quintessentially American piece of real estate in town? Am I having... Will I have to go to the intersection of Plattdeutsche and Wall when I want to go to Der Boden? I mean, the floor? But this isn't a show about jingoism or about xenophobia or ethnocentricity. Three words that just might put you over the 750 threshold in the verbal portion of the SAT. It's a show about making money. And this Deutsche Bourse New York Stock Exchange deal, it's making my job much easier. Why? Because with the acquisition of this sui generis institution, you gotta Google that, it's impossible not to realize that everything sell, sell, is for sell, sell, sale sell, sell, sell. in this country. And if that's the case, if foreigners can now come in here and buy, 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 whatever they want, then the market is just too darn low. See, these foreign takeovers are a recent phenomenon. The MYX deal is more emblematic of a much bigger trend, one spurred by a desire to buy real dollar assets here before the dollar is debased into oblivion by our reckless Washington Congress, by the horrible budget deficits. Oh, and you need any more evidence that everything's for sale? Consider that PetroChina, after the close, paid Encana, that's not my Philadelphia accent, they actually called it Encana, a huge oil and gas company, $5.4 billion for just a 50% stake in one of its assets, the Cutbank Ridge. I don't even know what Cutbank Ridge is. Anyway, consider that on Monday, Ensco, a British company, bought Pride International, classic American oil service outfit. Hey, same time, uh, Santa Fe Ventus, French company, closed in on one of our great biotechs, Genzyme. Just last week, Chesapeake made its second deal with CNOC, another Chinese oil company, selling them prime assets in Wyoming and Colorado. Talk about iconic. I've been thinking, you know what that's like? That is like John Wayne singing around the campfire with Chairman Mao. Why, it's uh -huh. true Mushu grit. <laughs> these Chinese companies, these Chinese oil companies that we're talking about, I got to tell you something. Uh, this is heretical. Why? Because just six years ago, the feds wouldn't allow CNOC to buy Unical. OK, admittedly, that was the Chinese coming through the front door. These Encana and Chesapeake deals, they're more backdoor ventures. But they count big time nonetheless. Hey, speaking of backdoor, don't forget that Bright Food Group, another one of those sunshiny named Chinese companies, is in talks to buy GNC Holdings. You gotta believe the buying spree has only just begun. Who knows which companies are in the crosshairs of the Chinese next? We tend to forget that the Canadians and the Spanish have been buying up our bags, banks. Indians, Norwegians, French have been buying up oil properties all over the country. Our biotech companies are for sale to the highest European and French bidders, even as they represent the repositories, and Swiss too, of quintessential American scientific know-how. 
you got to recognize the importance of this trend because the foreign acquisitions are getting more visible and are no longer risible. You got to understand what it means for your portfolio, especially on a day when the market drooped. And I, you know, with the S&P at least, and I'm sure the bears are going to be growling, telling you that we have seen the highs in the S&P for the year. They always say that. Oh, Ed, all these foreign takeovers are kind of like a bright neon sign screaming that American stocks are too cheap. See, it's one. You see, it's one thing to have stocks go higher because of demand from hedge funds and mutual funds and pensions. It's another thing to talk about our companies just being snapped up, right, merging with each other. But then you're saying it's okay for the Germans to buy one of the premier U.S. institutions? Got the Chinese gobbling up our oil and gas assets? You are opening up a whole new world of possibilities. When I was a young pup at Goldman Sachs with tons of hair in the 80s, we were always petrified that the Japanese, at that time ascended, or the Chinese, then just scrappy competitors, would come in with cheap products and wreck the margins of so many different companies from Ford and Chrysler to Xerox and Zenith. That's why I always tried to get people to buy companies like Kimberly Clark and General Mills. When I cold called people in my first appointment, I would always recommend Heinz. Why? Because as I said at the time, you'll never see a bottle of Chinese ketchup on an American table. You know what? I think I was wrong. I think it's possible, except the bottle would say Heinz, but Heinz would be owned by some communist Chinese company like, I don't know, like Bright Foods, maybe like Happy Red Edibles Corp. And, and that changes the game. It changes what the stocks of American companies are worth. For example, I think now the idea of selling an Avon after one more in a long line of bad quarters makes no sense after the pending acquisition of a board of Culver by Unilever, which is Dutch. Dutch company could buy them, a Chinese company. They got big business in China. I think one of the reasons why Clorox rallied after that miserable, awful, horrible, stinking quarter. At I, I meant to be more statesman after they missed the quarter. It's just a, it, it, it's a sort of quintessential American business that a Chinese branded company would love to own. How much would it cost to recreate that household brand? Same goes for Kimberly Clark. How many missed quarters before an Asian company puts that sucker out of its misery? I say pass the dang dang Kleenex. Do you really want to sell the aforementioned slow growing Heinz, knowing that Pittsburgh's best would fit in with any number of British, French, or Swiss companies? Nestle's, that would make sense. And most importantly, do you think any independent oil and gas concern with assets in the Marcellus, the Barnett, the Eagleford, the Fateful Shales, it, Barnett, is going to be able to stay independent down here when the world is so short of natural gas and we have such an abundance of the stuff that it might never even be used in this country because we favor electric batteries and coal? They're all takeover targets now. After this Encana deal, holy cow. To many of you, particularly the cynics, if not the skeptics, our country's been going off the rails for years and years and years. I hear the cat calls. Ridiculously underfunded uh, entitlements, crazy budget deficits, level of governmental dysfunction that has us worried on almost a daily basis that we're leaving the problems for our children to handle. But that's not how these foreign companies view America. You know what PetroChina and Sinox see? They see the future in our natural gas holdings that we don't want, but they're desperate for. And, and they know that Washington's now welcoming investments from China. A nation that holds hundreds of billions of dollars of our country's debt, we're on hook to them, right? It's like, it's like, uh, it's like crystal math. Uh, you know what Deutsche Börse sees? An America that's for sale because the euro is once again ascended versus the dollar. An America that has real growth while Europe is more limited. You know what Unilever sees? Global brands that are not going to be dislodged from the world's supermarkets. These foreign players see real companies they could snap up rather than treasuries that could be the equivalent of wallpaper if we don't get our acts together. Here's the bottom line. Consider these foreign takeovers your safety nets after blown quarters and mistaken execution. Consider these acquisitions as still one more reason to think our market is cheap to all comers. And get used to this. Get used to the idea that one day Wheaties will be the breakfast of Chinese champions. Hey, why don't we go to Margie in Hawaii, who's probably not Akamai, because Akamai blew up tonight. What's up, Margie? Here's an aloha booyah to you, Jim, from Kailua, Hawaii. Ma mahalo, mahalo. Go ahead. With the uh, Hewlett-Packard tablet news today, is Qualcomm a good indirect play on smartphone stocks? It's not an indirect play. It's probably the best single play. And, uh, you know, my charitable trust, Stephanie uh, Lincoln, she's a research writer. We gave a conference call today to Chairman's Club, this thing we got at the street. And we were both, like, lamenting that we don't own Qualcomm because, boy, have they ever gotten it together. They are the play on 4G. You should be in it. Hey, let's stick with Hawaii because while we're down there, it's easy just to get another person on the line. Let's go to Mike in Hawaii. Mike. Aloha booyah to you, Jim. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thanks I love first-time callers. We get things, we get people enthused in the home state of Shane Victorino. What's up? 
Hey, a um, quick question. Peabody Energy recently seems pretty flat along with the energy section. I'm wondering if this is a good time where I take half off the table and increase my position either in the tech sector versus Apple versus G JDS. I am going to tell you not to do that. Peabody's down right now. It's been a little bit of problem there with Australia. It's going to come roaring back. Coal is in. If you listen to the Peabody call, which I did, I got to tell you, they are in a super cycle for coal. Please don't sell Peabody. All right, the Germans are coming, but so are the Brits, the Chinese, everyone else. What does it mean? It means that our stocks are darn cheap. And when you look at this PetroChina deal, if it weren't for the Deutsche Bourse deal, I think it's all we'd be talking about. Man, money be right back.